In this video, we will take what we know about series and parallel, and we will develop the rules for adding capacitors that are in series and combining capacitors that are in parallel. Why do this? Well, it turns out that companies don't make every value of capacitor that you'd want, nor are you going to make them yourself. Often we have to combine capacitors to get a value that we want. And we can do this by connecting multiple capacitors in series or in parallel. Another reason is, is that sometimes when we combine different elements in electrical circuit, whether we want to or not, they will have some capacitance. That may not be their primary thing, maybe that we think of them as a resistor. But all materials have some capacitance, some inductance, and some resistance. And so whether we think we are or not, when we combine various components from a radio kit or on a TV set, we're naturally going to be doing this whether we want to or not. So a series circuit is shown here. I've got a set of capacitors. And we know that if we put in a charge Q1, or just Q, let's say, going in here, this charge Q that goes in here creates a minus Q on this side and the missing plus Q moves over to the next plate. And then that causes a minus Q to be here with the Q moving over to that place and a minus Q there. And this is between A, B over here. This is A. And the places between here, I'll give the numbers or symbols C and D. On this side, we're looking for a single capacitor that if we were to connect between A and B, this capacitor would have the same Q on its plates, plus Q and minus Q, and it would have the same VAB, plus and minus between here. Now, VAB is not shown over here. What I have is VAC and then VCD and then VDB. And one of the things we're going to learn is that VAB, this total, is the sum of these other potentials. This is really just a statement of the conservation of energy. That if the charge went up a little bit, it gained some energy, and a little bit more, it gained more energy, and a little bit more, it gained some more energy, it would be equivalent to it going all the way across to the voltage VAB multiplied by its charge to get the same amount of energy. VDB. I'll use that in a minute to generate the formula. For now, I'm going to just tell you the results. When you group as capacitors in series, they're equivalent to a single smaller capacitor. So if you want to make a capacitor smaller, take a couple of capacitors and put them in series, and the result will be a capacitor smaller than either of the ones that you started with. The formula for determining the total capacitance is that the equivalent or total capacitance, 1 over that, is equal to 1 over the first capacitor plus 1 over the second capacitor plus 1 over the third capacitor and so on and so forth. So the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocal capacitances of each capacitor. Now how did one come about that? Not that I'm planning to necessarily always do a proof. We usually wait till a little later in the course to do this, but let me show you that it's really not that hard. The total charge Q is the same in each one of these problems. This one, this one, this one. If I talk about the voltage, VAB, that's Q over CEQ. This is VAB. This is just using the definition of capacitance for this capacitor. But we've just said right up here that it's the sum of these voltages. So voltage VAC, that's the voltage across this capacitor, is equal to the charge on that capacitor divided by its capacitance C1. The voltage VCD is the voltage across capacitor 2, which is its charge, which is also Q, over C2. 
And last, the voltage across the third capacitor is Q over C3, and so on and so forth. Now, here's where our definition of series comes into play. The Q on each one of these is the same. They were in series. So that means that we can divide both sides by Q. So let's just divide both sides by Q. I'll cancel all of these Q's out. And that gets us, after I divide by Q, which of course would mean that I need to divide that by Q, then I end up with the equation right above. So it's just the conservation of energy and the definition of series that gives you this magical formula. Now, let me show you another way to realize that it should be a smaller. When you put these two capacitors together, or three or whatever, this point here and this point here, that's all the same point, point C, all at the same voltage, the same thing here. So what we're really doing is taking a capacitor like this and a capacitor like that. In other words, it just has two large plates which a much bigger gap. Now remember that the capacitance is epsilon naught times A over D. So if you make D bigger, you make C go down. So this is like making the space between the plates larger, which makes the capacitance smaller. Let's look at parallel now. When you put capacitors in parallel, the purpose here is exactly the opposite. We're not trying to make a smaller capacitor. We're trying to make a single larger capacitor. The formula for this one is also very easy. Let me show you how it comes about. Again, this is A and this is B. And likewise, this is A, and this is B. And the voltage on both this capacitor and on all of these capacitors is VAB. It's in parallel. They have the same voltage. They do not have the same charge, however. This charge has Q1 on the top plate, Q2, say minus Q2 on the bottom, Q3, and minus Q3. What we do know is that the total charge leaving this point and dividing up into these three paths has to sum up to what came into the, the point right here. So Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. The charge supplied by some battery or whatever has to be split onto three plates but the total charge that was supplied is the sum, Q1, Q2, plus Q3. Now, putting in our formula, Q is CEQ times VAB. Q1 is C1 VAB. Q2 is C2 VAB. Plus Q3 is C3 VAB and so on and so forth. But since the voltage is the same across each capacitor, we can cancel it out. And this gives us a wonderful formula for parallel, which is that the equivalent capacitance is simply the sum of the individual capacitances. C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus how many ever. Now, there's several ways to look at this. One way to look at this is that what you've done effectively is you simply made a larger plate because each one of these is connected to the same equipotential point, point B. And likewise, you made a bigger top plate. And we know that C is epsilon naught a over D, at least for a parallel plate capacitor. So you're making A bigger, therefore you should have made C larger. 
So that's one way to look at it. And that's a good way to look at it. I'm going to put that in the notes. Placing the capacitor in parallel is like increasing the plate area which increases the capacitance. Another way to look at it is think of the water analogy. So you have a set of tanks like this. They all have the same bottom. And then you fill them to the same height with water. Well, to get the same amount of water in a single trough, you would need a bigger trough. So you had made the capacitance larger. To hold the same amount of water, you'd need a bigger trough and it'll hold a larger amount of water so it has a greater capacity for the same height. Same idea. What you've really done, you've increased the area of the water trough. Now there are some special cases that you should know because it will speed up your work. If you only have two capacitors in series, two capacitors in series, there is this useful formula that the equivalent capacitance is the product of the two capacitor divided by the sum. Only works for two in series, but that happens so often it's a useful one to memorize. Especially when you don't have a calculator do, where you can take inverses because you probably don't want to work with fractions. Another one, and this is incorrect in the notes, it should say in series, is when you put in of a particular type so you could have one, two, three, four, whatever. Mm -hmm. The answer to here is this is like a division circuit. You just take the capacitance and divide by the number. So if there were three, it'd be C over three. If there were two, it'd be C over two. If there were five, it'd be C over five. This can be very useful and very helpful on doing AP and other type of circuit. All right, that's enough for this video. We'll do some examples in another video.